Hi, I'm Wilson Bickford, professional artist and art instructor. Uh, I've had a fantastic response from my previous YouTube posts that I've had on for the last year. I've had many uh, suggestions and uh, comments and people asking for specific projects and uh, lessons. So I've just posted some more. I hope you enjoy what I've shown you. I wanted to make you aware that I do have a website. It's www.wilsonbickford.com. And I do have some DVDs available on there, one that features an old barn, one that features a sunset. And I do have a new uh, book that's just coming out on the market just now. Um, it's Wildlife Landscapes You Can Paint. It's through Northlight Publishing, which manufactures thousands of art books. This is an acrylic medium. So far, my YouTube lessons have all been in oils. This is an acrylic, and it features animals. And they're all broken down into step-by-step -step fashion. So this is, will be available on my website, also on Amazon.com, and basically worldwide. So thanks for watching my videos. Check out my website and my blog. And I'd love to hear your comments. And I'm sure sometime in the future I'll have some more uh, lessons posted on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Take care. Hello again. Up to this point, I've been basically showing you landscape elements. Um, various trees, clouds, that sort of thing, waterfalls, uh, birch trees. Uh, I thought for something different, I'd share something with you uh, as far as something you could incorporate into a still life or a floral. If we get the camera zoomed in here, I want to show you some of these drops that I've put on these flowers. This is a hibiscus. These are roses, obviously. Um, but I put some drops on here, like dew drops, raindrops, whatever, moisture on these flowers. Um, it's a really nice accent to a floral painting, or if you had a still life with maybe some fruit or uh, something on a table, you put a nice dew drop on it. It really lends a professional quality to your work. They're very, very, very easy to do. That's what I can't stress enough to you. The main thing that will uh, uh, be your downfall is the shape. Bubble or uh, drops have a certain shape. There are bubble drops, what I call running drops, and drip drops, which are exactly what they say they are. They look like they're about ready to drip. A bubble drop is exactly what it says. It's a bubble that sits on a flatter surface and it's just sitting there minding its own business. This is a bubble drop. These are bubble drops. Notice they're different sizes. They don't all have to be the same size. A lot of times you'll see them where they're on there. You'll have a bunch of small ones and a bigger one throughout. This is a bubble drop. A running drop is exactly what it says it is. It looks like it's running down the petal. It's, or it's building up to the point where it's getting fuller and eventually it's just gonna cut loose and drip. But it's actually running down a little bit. This is a running drop. These are running drops. Um, these are running drops going down the stems. The drip drop, uh, like I said, is the one that's actually gonna drip off something and just fall off. There's a drip drop. There's a drip drop. They're just the classic teardrop shape. For whatever reason, in my classes, these are the correct shapes. These are more what you want to stick with, and they have a shadow underneath them. This one wouldn't, wouldn't require a shadow because it's suspended, not touching anything. For whatever reason, though, this is what I usually see in my classes. These are the incorrect ones. People have a tendency to do this with the bubble drop, and it's not really symmetrical. And the height, it needs to be very round and very symmetrical. They're all symmetrical. If you get them out of symmetry, they look wrong. I can't tell you how many times I've seen people do their drips like this that look like a football. It's going to be very bulbous on the bottom and narrow in at the top, just like a classic teardrop. If you get the shapes right, that's 90% of the battle. Most people have more trouble with getting the shape right than in actually painting them in. So you want to study these shapes for just a second. I've got a canvas up here that I'm going to uh, show you some of these drops on. I'll take these down. I have a canvas in behind here. I put some red and green on it to kind of mimic uh, maybe what you'd encounter with some leaves and some flowers. Just different colors because I want to show you that the important part is the transparency. On my palette I've just got titanium white, a little bit of a clear medium, which is liquid. You could use Alexander Magic Clear, Bob Ross liquid clear, um, 
any of the Grumbacher mediums, clear mediums. You just want to be able to thin your paint down a little bit. And you can actually use paint thinner. So I'm going to take some uh, titanium white and a little bit of thinner and a little bit of this medium on a liner brush. Now this will be bigger than true to life. I'm going to make this much bigger. You wouldn't want to put a drip on your canvas this size. I'm just doing it for demonstration purposes. I'm going to roll this brush together. A bubble drop would be something like this where it's actually just that bubble shape. Be aware the scale of this is way out of whack. I'm making this much bigger than it should be for a painting of the size I just showed you at least. What you want to do is put in the shape, wipe your brush off on a towel, same brush, you can use the same brush or a clean brush, wipe this brush off. What you want to do is destroy the inside edge so that it looks like it's transparent and the whole key is letting the background, whatever color that happens to be. Notice it's going to be pinker here, greenish here. That's why I've got that variegated background. I wanted to stress that whatever color is behind it is what needs to show through. That's what makes it look transparent. Depending on your light source and light direction, you can put a strong highlight on like that. Now see how that looks see-through, transparent, just like it should. Underneath you would have a darker shadow which really raises it up. For this one it's predominantly green under there. The shadow underneath would correspond to what it's sitting on. If it's sitting on a green leaf, you'll have a darker green shadow. If it's sitting on a red flower, you'll have a darker red shadow. If it's on a yellow flower, you'll have a darker yellow. And I put the shadow underneath like this, which sets that right up. Now notice I'm a little bit out around here. It has to be symmetrical. Watch out for that. So I'm going to make sure that that stays nice and round. And then I wipe the brush and you just softly blend away the bottom edge, let it soften into the background somewhat just so it's not a hard, hard line. And there's a bubble drop sitting right there looking at you. I'll do another one for you, but it's the same idea for all of them. Um, let me try one of the running drops. It's the same idea, but it looks like it's running downhill. This one will be silhouetted against the pink, so it's going to look like it's on a flower maybe, or something red. Again, make sure it's very round on the bottom and symmetrical as much as you can get it. The shape is critical. I'll wipe the brush off. I'm going to blend away the inside edge. If it's easier for you, you can actually use a bigger brush. It doesn't matter what brush you use. I'm using a bigger canvas here so I can get away with this on uh, something the size of what I just showed you earlier with the flowers. I wouldn't be able to use a brush this big, obviously. But the idea is just to blend away the inside edge. Put a strong highlight on it. Um, let's say the light's coming from the left side. There it is. And you'd want a corresponding shadow under that. Now it's setting predominantly on red, so you want a darker red. So I'm going to take some of the crimson and sap green and make a darker red for the shadow. And it's the same idea. Notice how this really sets it up. Makes it look three-dimensional. And then you want to soften that bottom edge of the shadow against the flower petal or the leaf or whatever it sets against. Now these are very easy and it doesn't take two minutes to add a lot of drops to your painting when it's done. And these will go on equally well whether your painting background is wet or dry. This one is dry, actually. And I do have a little bit of a clear medium on it. But don't be afraid to give these a shot. These will add a lot to your painting, like I say. Let's have another look at these. And please check out my website. It's wilsonbickford.com. There's info on there on ordering DVDs and my book and also some uh, information on where to get some good filming done through Obsidian Custom Video. So don't forget your shapes. Those are critical. Give these a whirl. And I'd love to hear your comments, how it works out for you. Thanks for stopping by. We'll catch you next time.